how many concurrent requests and blocking input output uh, database deadlocks. Uh, when we faced this issue with Rugiondo, we actually uh, decided to use queuing uh, systems. Um, however, uh, yeah, we will talk today about different uh, different solutions. So actually, there are uh, yeah there are two different. Uh, like ways how to uh, process asynchronously so and why we do do we need it it's uh, do we need parallel execution or background processing and uh, based on this uh, problem uh, it depends also the solution which we go uh, so there's a difference um, and yeah different solutions possible um, but during this session we actually i planned to cover uh, both cases uh, generally uh, yeah so the question uh, I want also to discuss, like how how we can uh, launch PHP asynchronously, because as I mentioned before, PHP is made as synchronous language. So there are different ways uh, you can use, as I mentioned before, a message queuing, a message broker to implement a synchronous messaging between uh, multiple systems responsible for different parts of uh, your application. It can be Revit and Qt, can be Amazon SQS or even Kafka uh, to create events, streams, uh, and do replication between uh, different services. Uh, in Riondo, around uh, like seven years ago, we decided to use uh, Girman, a bit different system, but with the same idea. It works actually until now, and doing its job still uh, doesn't matter that it's quite simple and um, uh, yeah, not very feature quite. However, it brings any anyway additional architectural and infrastructural change, challenges to manage these external systems and keep them stable and scalable, especially if it's critical part of your architecture. During this session, I want to consider more native PHP ways of implementation, asynchronous and parallel execution. We will try to use promises concept, which is known uh, for those of you who is familiar with Node.js, um, event loop, child processes. Uh, for this, we will use uh, React PHP framework, but also coroutines, channels, and multiprocessing, uh, which are features of Swool, another framework. Yeah. So let's start with actually my example project, which I quickly prepared, especially for this session. It's, a simple, it's as simple as it is without any framework, except Composer. So, this is actually a dummy project, um, very simple one, uh, nothing related to production system and nothing which, we, which can be example of a technical masterpiece, but I want to focus today on trying something live in easy way. Uh, therefore, I used Composer, which makes it simple to install external frameworks in, like React PHP. I have chosen actually as a start project, small dummy booking system which by request generates new booking with a ticket and registers this ticket in the list of external providers. So on each request, it should return information about the booking uh, ID, ticket code, and list of providers who accepted the registration, meaning uh, can accept people coming with the tickets. So just quickly go through the structure. Uh, it has few models. Uh, very simple dummy model of booking PHP, which has just set of uh, setters and getters, and actually the get info, uh, which returns generated also booking number, which is just unique ID in this case. Um, so, and next uh, model is provider actually. So in this case, provider has the method of register. Um, what is um, I actually? will make it more bigger. Uh, yeah, so provider actually has method of register, which uh, uses, uh, just sends the code uh, to the uh, external systems. In this case, it's of course dummy sent. And then model of ticket, which just uh, generates a unique ID with ticket code. Uh, two models, uh, two services, booking service, with, uh, which actually uh, has a method to create booking, and uh, also the command, which we use in Composer as a uh, CLI command, co command, and login service for just uh, showing the logs. Uh, it has an infrastructure 
a simple uh, dummy repository which just generates a set of uh, models of providers which we will use to send a request to register uh, salt booking salt tickets and basically the register request uh, it has also a simple docker file uh, this composer is based on php uh, 7.3 in this case and yeah it's uh, just when when we run it it just requests the common booking create which is described in composer json and just running the create booking cmd uh, there is also a simple uh, running script so let's try what this application is doing and actually as you can see it returns json with booking information including provider ids which actually accepted our tickets it works pretty fast because it's all dummy data so no real requests sent anywhere nothing is saved so it works just uh, to, to generate this uh, information yeah so uh, on first step uh, i want to introduce to you um, the concept of uh, promises so actually promises uh, So yeah, so promises are are, obj are special. Um, yeah, I, I mean, uh, they, you probably know about promises from uh, the JavaScript world, from Node.js. Uh, promises is uh, asynchronous uh, in this, in asynchronous world is a placeholder of some unknown results uh, of running of of running of asynchronous code before we got a real result. So it's kind of placeholder. Uh, in real life, example of promise is actually when you're ordering a food in McDonald's or sale on, on sale terminal, POS, uh, POS terminal, you get a first a ticket uh, with a number and instead of your food describing what exactly uh, should you expect to get after your order is prepared. So uh, this exactly example of promise in real life. In uh, software, it's pretty the same. So you have just an explanation of what result would you expect after it will, will be actually asynchronously resolved. Uh, so we will start with React PHP framework, which implements um, a promise concept for PHP world. So first of all, we of course uh, need um, we need a library. So we need to install this composer uh, require React promise yeah and in this case what does it bring to us yeah so basically if we open uh, our create booking uh, uh, method in booking service uh, what we can do is we can create some kind of deferred object in this case deferred object This is the object of React PHP library, and actually, deferred object can create a promise. So, in case if you, if you look inside, so a promise is exactly this uh, promise object, which actually uh, is a placeholder for our uh, result, which we will have later, and it can be resolved or rejected actually. And if you check the uh, promise object itself, then we can see that it has also methods of then, uh, which can include uh, receive uh, callable functions for what should be done actually on fulfilled, what should be done on rejected, uh, and also function done, otherwise, and so on. So how will we use this actually? So for example, we can set up for promise set of callback functions which, for example, uh, will accept our booking as a promise, as a, before it was actually fulfilled. And uh, we can just like show that it was resolved. Again, it's a dummy callback, but actually, it shows how it works and basically we can return further our booking for further processing because we can have actually several then uh, functions to be used like a pipeline and we can also 
um, yeah, kind of uh, have another callback which has some reason. In this case, it's just will uh, yeah show you what was the reason why it was uh, not fulfilled. So actually, as you can see, this is callback of fulfilled, and this is callback of rejected. Yeah. <clears throat> In this case, as I mentioned, we can actually make a, it like a pipeline and have even another uh, callback function, which will also accept the same booking instance. And for example, will uh, like return or echo the information about booking. So in this case, we created a promise object. We defined which functions will be used when we have result, which function should be used when it's not possible. So we have some error. And actually this, uh, yeah, this is not, uh, not including any uh, result yet. Um, so, but this is how, how actually the uh, promises should be used. Unfortunately, despite it's designed for asynchronous processing, it's not in fact. So for the moment, we are still processing everything synchronously and do not have any uh, win on performance or user experience. Cur currently, it's only a matter of architecture approach. So I will just uh, jump because we don't have enough time to ready examples. So So now I can show you how it's working. So we have actually a function create booking promise, which basically is doing what I just described. And this promise um, actually accepts the booking uh, object. Uh, and when booking is created, when uh, for, to resolve this promise, we just set in the ticket. So we create a new ticket because it, it's a part of booking. And basically then we also registering this booking and at the end saving. So this is example how it's uh, used in the project. But however, if you go to the register request, so here we have just a send function which just goes through the uh, each provider and uh, registers virtually the ticket uh, on this provider. So if we put here some kind of sleep, actually we will have a problem because we will, uh, so this sleep actually it's a dummy uh, like example how uh, usually a third party service can respond with network um, or something like that uh, with delays actually. And this will anyway be processed uh, synchronously. So what I want actually to do is um, uh, to make really a parallel execution. And for this, I will jump into the next step with our code and we'll show you how can it be done. Uh, on this step, I want to introduce you to the, to the concept of event loop. Uh, in this case, uh, let me check. So, yeah. Just one moment. Yeah, so basically the loop is, um, event loop is a, is something which is used for uh, on React application um, uh, yeah to 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 actually uh, run everything in a synchronous way so this is the core element of react vault react php vault uh, so everything in react is using this component uh, however it runs still synchronously in single thread but it uses ticks and uh, timers to plan and execute all other events asynchronously. So you probably familiar with set timeout concept in JavaScript. Um, it's quite similar to what actually React PHP proposes. So as a developer, you create an, a single instance of uh, a loop with a factory. In this case, uh, this library can create different uh, loops different, uh, using different modules or libraries. Uh, in our case, it will be default one. And basically, then you use this object further in the in your application uh, to assign uh, some callbacks uh, or some functions which should be uh, launched in within this uh, uh, loop. And 
at the end of your application, you just execute it. So actually in this example, until running, uh, nothing will happen uh, on application. So in this case, we created a loop, we assigned it, we send it to the register uh, method, uh, which actually also, uh, yeah, a little bit changed. So uh, here, I also um, want to introduce to another uh, element, which is pretty fresh from React PHP world, it's a child process. In this case, we will use child process exactly to run uh, parallel tasks, yeah? So we send actually into this register method, the loop interface, and we initiate inst instantiation of the uh, process uh, object, which at the end actually on the start will just launch you can check this but we'll open the sub uh, process in php and it will set also the period periodic timer within the loop uh, actually to see if this process is still running or not and cancel if it's not running anymore and return the uh, actually the result so in this case we instantiated this uh, object and started uh, providing our loop. And in this case also, we set our own periodic timer, which is checking actually when the process is not running anymore. And we check in the exit code. And depending on the exit code, if everything is fine, we resolve the uh, our promise, which we also send there or reject. So just if we check again. So in this case, in register service, we created a loop and we actually called the method register, sending the promise object and a loop itself. So now actually this will work completely uh, in parallel. So if we check also registration method, I also modified it in this case. Um, I also emulated something like a failed response and a success response. So there's a random a randomizer and actually uh, not every request uh, is returned uh, successfully. It means so the ticket is not accepted and also it has uh, like up to five tries. So this can usually affect the performance, but not in our case because we are launching it completely in uh, parallel. So let's try it again. Yeah, so despite all the changes, we still are quite fast and we register it with five uh, providers actually. Uh, yeah. So I hope it's still clear for you. Uh, just ask your questions and I will come back later to them. Uh, however, I want a little bit to improve this um, setup and also uh, within registration, I want to show you that our promises um, actually, uh, yeah, in this case, we were expecting that every, uh, like provider will actually respond. So we were waiting until, for example, if we have 10 uh, providers in our repository until all of them uh, actually accepting the ticket. Um, and in React Promise, we have also um, possibility to actually resolve the promise in, uh, or continue further in case if uh, uh, just so we have a list of promises and in case if just some of them or any of them are being resolved, then we can uh, actually uh, proceed further. So in this case, for example, we are okay if uh, uh, at least one provider actually accepted our ticket and uh, process it. So, yeah, let's run it again. Yeah, so because we use just any of them, so it's enough that only one provider actually accepted our ticket. So this is working uh, like expected. Yeah, uh, so child process in React is generally a good option. However, I want also to show you different approach uh, because it's still child process in this case, um, it looks a bit uh, as a workaround for me. So I want also to introduce you to the uh, another library, which is Swool. 
actually uh, Swool is not just a framework, but it's a PHP model. Um, and of course, we need to start further with installation of this model. However, I have everything, of course, prepared. So I can show you in, in the Docker file. Uh, now we have uh, installed extension Swool and we can use it. And actually, how will we use it? Let's check our uh, register booking again. And register request actually stays the same, but we introduced the model of registration. And in this case, we will use from Swoo uh, such uh, feature as a coroutine. So coroutine, it's exactly background process, which uh, it's processed something like child process in React, but uh, everything is done uh, inside PHP actually, because Swoo is PHP model. So in this case, for function of register, we uh, enable our coroutine. Uh, and then we are able to use the function go, which actually also has a callback. Uh, so this means when we execute in the go function, we run parallel process, background process, and the callback will be called also only when the process is finished. And actually in this case, we also can proceed a uh, process. So send the, our promise object and resolve or reject it. Yeah, so let's try again to run it. It should run actually the same way as we had before. Uh, yeah, the only thing, the difference is that in this case, remember I was showing you the uh, any, in this case, I change it also to some. Uh, and in this case, we expect that at least three providers actually accepted uh, our uh, tickets, but it's not related exactly to Swool, it's just to show you how uh, also promises can be used with React PHP. Yeah. Uh, so actually, I, another way how to use coroutines, uh, because in this case, we have very simple coroutine, uh, which just executes a background process. However, with Swool, we can also uh, set up more more uh, like, like uh, more detailed flow. So for example, in this case, we can introduce also producer and consumer. Uh, so we are running actually two uh, goal functions. And here we're using also new uh, element from Swool called channel. So we just instantiated the channel and then we using it within our callback functions. And for example, the producer, it just pushes the um, data into channel and consumer just uh, receiving the data from the channel. So actually it's working uh, on backend the same way. It's just a matter how to use and how to structure your code. So in this case, you can split the logic and not to have callbacks just exactly in the same function uh, when you run and go, but split it it between different models and separate them, meaning producer and consumer. Yeah. Uh, and now uh, I also wanted to show you uh, some funny example because actually right now we still, uh, so let's run again and we can see that it's working. We need to uh, in, like run our container all the time but Swool actually has uh, implementation of Swool server. So basically it allows us to build completely uh, independent web server, which will be just running uh, like, I don't know, like any other server or even like Node.js application, for example, constantly receiving our request and processing them asynchronously. So in this case, uh, yeah, I introduced also new infrastructure element as a booking server. So basically we uh, start a new server providing the IP address and port, which it will be listening. And then we set up also kind of callback. Uh, what will happen on start? On start, uh, it will just run a message that server started and available. And then on every request, we can set up the callback function, which will, called, uh, which will call our create booking command in this case. 
And actually it's very simple. We just start the server and that's it. To start it working, I also modified a little bit composer JSON. So I introduced also another script, which is start server, which just call in the create booking server command. And also, yeah, everything else stays the same. So we have still our booking create and register uh, asynchronously um, commands, which are launched on the ground. So let's start our server. So Swool HTTP server is started and can be used. And now we can simply use the, ah, also, of course, yeah, of course, I also expose the port. So it's uh, update from the uh, Docker file. And now we can try it. So we can just simply cool localhost 80. Yeah, so now we have the response and still our server is still running. So we can execute it again. And it's still the same running PHP application, but running uh, asynchronously. So that's it, actually. Uh, we do not have more actually time. That's why I was pretty fast. So if something not clear, please ask questions. Uh, also after the session, I will check the swap card and also uh, feel free to find me on GitHub. Uh, this project actually is uh, on my GitHub. Uh, so you can actually check it more precisely and ask me questions directly. All right. Many thanks for your talk and your live coding. Um, we're very sorry about the technical uh, issues that we had at the beginning. Um, yeah, <laughs> sorry. Sometimes for, it happens for, uh, for right? the listeners because it 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 a little bit broke my uh, session and uh, yeah, I, I needed to uh, to make it a little bit different than I expected. But yeah, it, can it was happen. perfect at the end. Uh, at least your your talk. <laughs> Everything worked at the end. Um, so I can see no questions coming up for now. Um, as you heard, Dennis, you can contact him anytime. And I would say thank you, Dennis, and thanks to the audience. Um, I hope you will have a nice day at the conference. And that's it for now. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye.